In this short video, I'll show you how to configure MPLS LDP on Cisco iOS XR nodes. Let's get started. So in this demo, I'm using EVNG, where I have two routers, R1, which is iOS XR based, and R2, which is a normal iOS based node. They are connected by a point-to-point -point link and I have already configured IGP. In this case, I have chosen OSPF between the two nodes. On R2, I have configured loopback zero as 2.2.2.2 and on R1, 1.1.1. Let's just configure a host name for the iOS XR node. And I will commit. And I have OSPF running between the two nodes. Before you configure MPLS LDP, you need to have an RGP running between your nodes, otherwise the labels will not be distributed. So let's just check that my OSPF is working. So here I can see a route for R1 loopback zero. I'll just double check further by running a ping. Source from R2 loopback zero. Okay, now that we have established that RGP is working, let's get started with configuring MPLS LDP. So the configuration for on a Cisco iOS node is different obviously from the iOS XR. So I'll start by configuring the MPLS router ID. So it's MPLS LDP router ID. And in this case, we have to use the interface name. For iOS XR, you will notice that this would be different. We have to put the actual RP address. Next step, once we have configured the MPLS router ID is to go on the interface. And I simply add MPLS IP. So this is as far as R2 or iOS is concerned. Now let's hop into the iOS XR node. Configuration mode. MPLS LDP. Router ID. As you can see here, you don't have the option to put an interface ID. So we have to put the actual RP address. And then you have the option to go under the address family. So here you would be adding or you'd be having different options where you can select which labels are advertised, which ones are uh, not advertised and so forth. So you have various options in this case. I will exit from this configuration mode and I go back to the LDP and just configure my interface. So this is really the simplest basic way to configure MPLS LDP. Let's see what is it that we're adding in terms of configuration. So MPLS LDP, we're setting the router ID and then we're adding the interface and then I commit. So if I hop back to R2, I should have an MPLS LDP session established showing in the log. So here we can see that it just came up and we have an LDP session with root to one. So few things to validate our configuration. Show MPLS LDP neighbor is one of the first thing that I run. And the information that you have here is the TCP connection between the loopback addresses. This shows me the source and destination address used for setting up this MPLS LDP session. And here as a source RP address, you can see the well-known TCP port 646. Next is show MPLS LDP interfaces. 
show on PLS interfaces. This is very handy where you have several interfaces and you want to see if one of them was actually missed. Here I can see that for gigabit 0000, 000 LDP is configured. I don't have a tunnel, it's not static. Yes, it is enabled. And detail doesn't give me much at the moment. Show MPLS LDP forwarding. And then I can also do show MPLS forwarding. You see the output is actually different, but it gives more or less the same information. So you can see here that the local label for 2.2.2.2, .2 .2 which is a loopback zero, is 24. Thousand. So this is the label of router 2 loopback 0 and the action to be taken for the outgoing label is to actually pop the label because we are directly connected. So that's, this is another topic of MPLS. Now this is an interesting one to watch out for. Show MPLS label range. You can see the range here for iOS XR is start from 24,000. Whereas if you go to the Cisco iOS node, You can see that it starts from 16 and then 100,000. So this is in short how MPLS LDP is configured on an iOS XR, on a Cisco iOS XR node. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next session.